Welcome to Film Freaks. This is Justin Llewellyn. And Eddie Williams. And tonight we're going to be doing another Netflix review. And this time we're going to be talking about the little film that is a yet another Stephen King adaptation, which is The End of the Tall Grass, which is directed by uh, Vincenzo Natili. And it's also got, uh, it stars Patrick Wilson and among others. And this is basically uh, a, a film adaptation of Stephen King and his, his son, uh, Joe Hill's uh, 2012 novella, of the same name. And which was film, their first project together, short story yeah. they first wrote together. Yeah. And in this film, it deals with pretty much like you see in the trailers, a group of people go inside the grass and some shit goes down and they basically have to escape. That's really the bare bones about this movie because that's well, it's bare bones. You see in the trailer are pretty much lost in a maze. Yeah, and, and there's some like, supernatural shit that goes down. Yep. Yeah. And uh, they basically have to encounter like some weird supernatural stuff going on in the in the in the in the grass. If you've seen Stephen King, you know it's gonna involve something. It's gonna mm-hmm. either involve sci fi well more and then this one, which again he's done many times, something with Indian burial grounds. You're go- that's basically the essentials of him. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's now, always a little... fucking those two things. <laughs> yeah. Now here's a little backstory. Now this is now the third film that uh, Steve, that uh, that there's a film released on Netflix that's based on one of Stephen King's works. Uh, works. Uh, the other two involved 1922 and Gerald's Game uh, in 2017, which those were fantastic. I I really enjoyed yeah. those two films. Uh, yeah. With this one coming out, it kind of got me curious because I. As you have you know, seen from um, know from on our channel, me and him are diehard Stephen King fans. We're always open to a lot of different films to that are based on his works and everything. And I didn't really see and much. Right of the now, we're at the Stephen King hype right now, thanks to it, um, where we're getting a lot of adaptations, and for the most part, they've done good, aside from some other ones. But that's yeah. just mentioned in other reviews. But uh, yeah, we're in this big Stephen King hype, and. Uh, um, after Pawn City, uh, I've been, oh yeah, when I, well, I, I saw the trailers to it, it looked pretty interesting. Uh, uh, what really grabbed me, it was kind of cool seeing Patrick Wilson. Um, he's one of those actors that I really like, I, I enjoy, and I think that any movie he can get, he can be put in, um, he, he, he can bring his great performance with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll get to our, uh, the, uh, his part in a second, but. Yeah, and then I started seeing some reviews because uh, I just watched it tonight, and he watched it last night. But it's been out for, I think, a week or a few days or whatever, but we've been seeing some pretty bad fucking reviews for this. And that kind of shocked me because it's been a long time since you heard an overwhelming audience hating something Stephen King. Because yeah, you can always what? find something you like yeah. about his problem. Yeah, and the last time I, I remember, I recall watching a film based on Stephen King's works that got such an overly well of fucking hate was was uh, Cell from uh, 2016. Yeah, aside from Cell, uh, I mean, and besides, you know, yeah, like you said, Cell, uh, you don't really hear much bad about Stephen King. I mean, I, to me, I do know he's done some bad stuff. Um, the you know the Children Corn remake. Not the eighty, not the eighty four version. I, I, I like that one, but the remake. And then I, I find this film really bad, but a lot of people don't. I didn't like Dreamcatcher. Yeah, same with here. So there's always going to be I, I, I his version of The Shining. Stanley yeah. Kubrick's was a lot better. Yeah. So with this one coming out, it got me interested a little bit because I like the whole. It, it kind of was like going for like a whole Children of Corn type vibe with the whole grass and everything. <laughs> And after upon seeing the film, I can say that, well, I can basically sum it sum it up in pretty much one sentence. What the fuck did I just watch? Yeah, it is. What the fuck did I just watch? This is, and I haven't seen Cell. Keep in mind, this is one of the worst Stephen King adaptations I have ever fucking seen. And... I will say that if it is true that this, for 90% of it, was about uh, mostly really good at that to his book, Into Screen, what the fuck, Stephen King? 
Dude, you got a fucking huge track record. You don't really write anything bad. Despite how bad the movie Cell was, I hear the Cell book is awesome. Like, yeah, I, I mean, you don't add stories. What the fuck? I mean, was it because you collabed with somebody and you both probably had... I mean, when you collab with somebody, it seems like that always creates a fucking mess. Yeah, I, it's Stephen what King happened with uh, The Mangler. Is. Yeah, it's what happened with The Mangler <laughs> in 95, where he collaborated with uh, Toby Hooper and uh, uh, Robert England on that one. So there's a lot of times where sometimes he's you're better off just doing a straight-up adaptation that's more based on your work that's not that's more like that stands on its own so to speak like if you're gonna write something i get that you you i mean i I get the consensual of like him and the son they probably you know been it's it's a cool idea son father son writing together uh that's cool idea it's just man what the fuck was this i i'm i was lost yeah a lot in this and i've gained over the hours I'm starting to gain a little bit more. Okay, I get what I was trying to do, but it's still really fucking bad. It was. And and it, it's like watching Groundhog's Day, but it's all right. It's like a mixture of this. Watching Groundhog's Day, right? That whole theme we've been seeing like with Happy Death Day and quite a few others. You take that, but then they're stuck in dimensions because this film is rinse and repeat because – there's like a lot of Groundhog Day ish feel to it. Meets Children of the Corn, and I will tell you right now, the very Children of the Corn vibe in this film with the the Indian things going ha huh, ha huh, that you heard in the '84 movie, like the mute, you know, the themes with the the Indian themes that they they did in '84. Children of the Corn, you hear you hear that they're mentioned Nebraska. I mean, aside from it not being corns, it's grass. It looks like cornfields. And the fucking thing they have in this thing reminds me of, could that be the true form of he who walks behind the rose? <laughs> That's what I wonder. But it's yeah. Like fucking station, like before he decided to retire. Uh, it was like after he retired cornfields and say, fuck cornfields. I'm going to grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's like a mixture and because the, it's like a mixture of that. And then you get the church and I swear there was a scene in this movie, where that gas station looked like the one in fucking the 84 movie. It looked yeah. exactly like it. Yeah, so I could see what they were going for, but this movie failed on, like, so many levels. So where do oh we start? Oh my god, it failed. Yeah, alright, let's get the pros, because I'm going to tell you, my pros are going to be done over with quick. Let me get through my pros. The uh, cinematography atmosphere and being stuck in the, the grass is kind of very... Um, it's it, it it can be it's not intense. It's kind of like if you were in that situation, it would been kind of scary. Mm-hmm. Like you feel lost. It, you get a sense of loss. But the cinematography of nighttime was pretty clear. I, I enjoyed the cinematography. Um, I, I uh, probably the best thing is the score. I will say it has a good score. It does, and I also do yeah. like it. And aside it is- from like one bloody scene. And this one fucked up scene that tried to remind me of a little bit of Mother. <laughs> yeah, I would say that. There are some good visuals. Like I will say. That should be shocked and all, but other than that, that's it. That's all I have. Yeah, I will pro. say. Yeah, I will say that um, there are some good visual like um, parts that I do like the way it kind of goes into this weird, you know, uh, psychedelic kind of feel. Where they oh, yeah. experience the, the stuff with the rock and stuff like, like that. Well, yeah, they do the psychedelic thing where you look at this rock, it starts being kind of artsy with the blood and all that stuff. And then you start seeing this clear cut grass becoming bleeding. It just does this weird shit, trying to be artistic y. And it, like I said, it goes with my cinematography visual part of my pro, but that's about it. Yeah. You know I mean? And there is actually a cool, gory scene that I do kind of like. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of a pro and con because it, it falls into a like so bad it's kind of good category with the way that there's a certain – well, we'll get to it later. But let's just say that it's kind of ruined by the person's performance level. But yeah. we'll get to that later. But, but anyway, yeah, yeah that's so, pretty much but, all my pros yeah. with the movie. And, it su- and just before we start to our cons, what sucks about this movie so bad is – while I did name maybe one or two things I liked, it is 
I can't even enjoy it because 99% of this movie, when we get our cons, was so bad. I can't even like the good stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this movie was so uh, fucking... Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So basically, when we already start from the opening scene, when we get our, to our, introduce to our main characters, who's this guy, uh, this brother and sister that are on their way um, to San Diego, and they come across this, uh, co- they come across this grass field, and uh, they get held up in Kansas. And basically, when they get when they're on their way, they come across this church, and uh, they notice that like all these cars are there and stuff, and then they. They basically see that they hear like a a boy crying inside and already from the opening scene, like the movie kind of sets the mood at first. So that's another problem. I will say it does kind of set the mood at first the way it was trying to go with. But unfortunately, after the first 10 minutes, after they get lost in the woods, it becomes a clusterfuck with fucking editing in this movie. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, Me. I was a little iffy at the ending, uh, the beginning. Whenever uh, it starts off, it does set up like what you. It, it sets up quite fast. It doesn't give you this long, drawn out journey to it. But it just says "fuck it," let's jump right in, into it. But I was already kind of crin- I was kind of biting my teeth a little bit because I found some of the lines coming out of the the two leads' mouths kind of low budget. Yeah, their acting wasn't that good, but I mean, I will at least admit that, like, the way it kind of, like, sets the bar, I could see the potential they were going for, because it does kind of put you in that right atmosphere, is what I'm trying to say. I think if anybody's acting was good in this film, was uh, probably at the very last 15 minutes of the movie, where it seemed like, you know, they were pushing for emotion, and pushing for, like, brutality, Especially with the this one guy that shows up, the boyfriend. But other than that, you're just like, man, where was that acting the whole movie? Because some of the writing and the lines and the way it's like it's blurted out out of the the actors' mouths seemed like something I'd find in a fucking five dollar bin. Like yeah, they were struggling to make a, a script, something to say. Because we forgot to mention earlier, this is a short story turned into a um, a movie. And don't give me that shit. About, well, it's a short story. It's t- kind of hard to do. Bullshit. Children of Corn 84 did it good. Graveyard Shift did it fucking magnificent. It's been done, and it can work. It's just bad, poorly done choices of director and writers. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, um, yeah, it already after the first, like, five, ten minutes, when we when we get them lost in the, in the field, um... It shows there afterwards that the movie just cuts back to a new scene where afterwards they end up getting, uh, we get introduced to basically. Well, first, that person they run into is a little boy. Yeah, that's right. And this little across the little boy. fucking acting fucking bizarre. Like, you know, something ain't right with him. Because he, yeah. he's all about, like, follow me follow me and the dead must bury you know trying to be all fucking pet cemetery ish you know and then yeah. like th- then this movie another con i have the editing what the fuck it just like would do that and and then like it would jump into new characters out of the blue and then it would show like it would show like them in their predicament yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like, because after I, after I the girl, <laughs> yeah, after the girl gets pretty much attacked by an unseen figure, um, the movie jumps to a new character who's the boyfriend looking for uh, the girl, and when he yeah, arrives there, this, this is surprisingly surprise, uh, magically new where they heard her war in the middle of fucking nowhere. We're talking about a big continent of USA. And I believe whenever they were driving, they were driving far away. And they were on their way to San Diego. And what's the chances of this fucking boyfriend fucking knowing exactly where they were at? Yeah, and what's weird is that, okay, when he arrives at the church, notices that there's still all the cars there and stuff. What threw me off was the scene where he starts hearing... uh, he starts hearing the fucking voices inside the uh uh he, he starts hearing the voices inside 
the grass. Well, he actually he just goes across the grass. He eventually comes across the hole. He actually doesn't hear the boy. He goes inside and comes across them, basically. Yeah, he comes across them, but what he does, what makes him go in there is he hear he hears the uh, the, the girl. ex girlfriend because it's yeah the girl that it's we call him boyfriend, but apparently they broke up. Had something about her pregnancy and stuff. We're not gonna go deep into, but he hears her and he hears the uh, the brother. So he's like, hey, yeah, you know, he runs in the field, and then it's like a transition because we said the boy was kind of evilish looking, and then uh, doing some pretty fucked up shit because of this rock, and it's like we transition to new people t- uh, becoming the new leader or whatever, and this movie starts getting the writing. The plot, the structure, this was horrible. I mean, you have scenes where Patch Wilson comes in, and he's looking for his wife and his son, who is that little boy. And there's parts where he is, like, genuine, a scared father, like, freshly new been there. But then the scene before that, they were all dirty as if they'd been there for years. Yeah, it's what threw me off. And, and then, there was, then it would pan back to them coming in when they're new, Especially when they start running into the group, you know, everybody starts slowly finding each other, and it's just like, okay, so this is deja vu, or am I fucking seeing Groundhog's Day? Because we actually re-see the beginning of the movie again. Yeah, and it, and the little boy basically he's confused at first because he ends up coming across the boyfriend, and he's like, I know who you are. I got to tell you what's going on here. And then he, what, what threw me off was that he, he takes the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriend to the girl's corpse. I'm like, does he fucking die? That's weird. And yeah, then we see almost everybody die, but then without any explanation, they're alive. And yeah. there's not like trying to be obvious with the groundhog's day. You actually kind of have to interpret it that that's why this movie fails. Unlike Happy Death Day, which it tells you, it's letting you know, hey, it's a Groundhog's Day. This movie doesn't do that. And that's it where don't. it fails because it, it just jumps this, the, the fucking bucket. The next scene, you're like, and you didn't even realize it's actually Groundhog Day. It's another uh, uh, another version of a portal of the, uh, different scenarios. Now this guy touched the rock and he's evil. It's like, okay, I am fucking lost here. Yeah, and then pretty much, you know, you have it to where they're um, they're starting to that. What's throw me off is that they have that little. He sees that little boy there, and then or then later on, the same uh, brother and sister come back. The, the the boy and the and the girl come back again, doing the same scene, and then they're like, they can they have the boy with them. I'm like, what the fuck? What are what's going on here? Yeah, and then you and have, here's my biggest gripe. Patrick Wilson, what the fuck? I don't know if it was you or should I blame the writing more? Because he does some weird shit in this movie. He's a caring father, a scared guy looking for his family, one scene. And then when they're, without telling you that it's now a new dimension, another portal of a different scenario, he's kind of like this guy, like there's this part where this girl's having like these really bad pains from her pregnancy and she's seeing shit too. She's having like these like visual seeing weird dumb shit and falling over, always slow motion falling over, bleeding, blah blah blah. And like fucking Patrick Wilson comes out over the top Nicolas Cage and starts like doing CPR. He goes, Oh yeah, she's good. She had a heat stroke. No, if she had a heat stroke, she'd be dead. Or yeah. fucking a stroke. Do you know the difference? <laughs> she can't yeah, survive it, a stroke like that. I mean <laughs> I get that, you know, because later on in the film, it, it can show a person pretty much going crazy with the way they've pretty much come across. Because basically, while this is all happening, they come across this rock that's like there in the middle of the grass. And it's got effects on it. Yeah. And what's funny is I was because I was watching this movie with my mom. My mom thought it was a fucking giant avocado <laughs> the way it looked. <laughs> I agree. Or giant fucking shit. <laughs> I start thinking, huh? Pennywise came from a cosmic meteor thing on Earth. Maybe that was a piece of it. <laughs> yeah, either that or it's the meteor shit that Stephen King said in Creep Show. <laughs> yeah, meteor shit, exactly. And I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> 
Yeah. But anyway, they come across this this rock later in the movie, and it's supposed to basically like like redeem them and like it's supposed to be a, a supernatural kind of feeling that will put them like in a in a better place and stuff. And the moment well, that the, it, it basically it's it's like this thing that makes you feel good, kind of like uh, Star Wars. They say if you join the Dark Force, you will feel like am- amazing, like it's yeah. tempting. So you touch this rock, and like you're, you're you pretty much sacrifice yourself by being stuck in the there forever. But it's like the way that some of the characters explain it, it's like exquisite, like something that you've never felt. But yet yeah. you're fucking going nuts and fucking trying to slaughter people. Well, that and that's that basically becomes, and this now we're getting the spoilers. When Patrick Wilson's character comes across it, he starts base. It's basically revealed that he's basically like killing everyone back and forth um, in the in the and they're in a time loop. And yeah, and in a time loop, everybody's in a time loop, and you start seeing scenes where people disappear when they go one corner and disappear co- completely. It's like okay, I kind of knew it was probably going to do those dimension portal shit because that's what it was kind of pretty much looking like the whole movie. It's just uh, this is probably the worst uh, attempt at Groundhog's Day ish dimension shit I've ever fucking seen because nothing. At least those films, you can get a sense of knowing, like knowing the 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 identity, the where it's going, the story, the. What's Creighton and all that? This film never elaborates in any of that. No, it don't. I mean, other than the, than the kind of hint later on where it's revealed that it's it's supposed to be some type of ritual they're trying to do, which I even throw. Well, we'll get to that later. That even becomes even more fucking like questionable. So this movie keeps having questions that come up that are never fucking revealed. Yeah, like the what's up with the again? There's a scene that kind of remind me off, kind of remind me something from like Poltergeist or something. Where, like, all these bodies are down here, like, in the ground. They're all trying to come up and stuff. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, so it never elaborates that this has been going on to other people because it's – they try to bring up this effect that these uh, – this storyline, like, they were all brought there for a reason. And the reason is to settle their differences. Uh, that's weird because the whole world's got problems and differences. Yeah. What, what made these – what made these people special? What brought these people here? It's never elaborated. It's not. It's and, it, and this film, what they do also poorly on, I'd like to mention that pissed me off, was the fact that this film, and I don't know if the book is like it, but I'm pretty sure it is, is it's it makes you not it, – it, it tries to be un, so unpredictable that it actually ruined everything. Like the plot didn't make sense because they're like, we want to be so unpredictable you wouldn't even know who is who. You know, yeah, trying to exactly. twist this – and it makes no sense because you were you were doing it so so badly done. It's so badly done. You're like, man, I don't even know what the fuck I just watched. Not just that, but the whole thing about them having to sell their differences. It doesn't even make sense because we barely even know who these fucking people are. We we really don't yeah, know much about them. And then you get this like uh, banter between the the brother and the boyfriend, and, and he's basically like saying like. The, you're you're led to believe like the bro the brothers kind of got hots for the sister, yeah, in some kind of cringy way because he hates that man, but he hates he hates any men that get near his sister. And then the guy brings up, yeah, you you got the hots for your sister. You're trying to probably fuck her. I'm like, ooh, yeah. I'm like, don't bring this incest shit in here. But that fucking boyfriend, uh, I mean, the brother makes no fucking sense. Which that character, that actor, he annoyed the fucking piss out of me. Yeah, he did. Like he was and- a try too hard. Yeah, and then not just that, but here's where the movie starts to really start to get all over the fucking place. When we get to later in the movie when Patrick Wilson brings them together to The Rock again and everything, it becomes basically like Patrick Wilson's trying to channel fucking uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg from The Happening because his performance goes on a fucking hammy over-the-top level where he's like, he's like, it'll wash away, it'll it'll redeem you, and then basically... Nicholas Cage faces in these these scenes. He's like, yeah, it, it it works so well. I'm like, oh my god, Patrick yeah, Wilson, then, this is your worst performances, man. <laughs> and then basically after that, he ends up because he notices that the his wife ends up escaped in like the portal. I guess is what they're referring to. And he ends up yeah. he ends up end up having to kill her, and it's revealed that he's been pretty much killing everyone around him and everything. And then. 
basically, it comes to this scene right here. It was in such a weird, unintentionally hilarious kind of vibe because he's basically having his hands over the fucking girl's like head, and he's about to squish her fucking head, and he's telling the son, and he's like, he's like, it's okay, son, it's just skin, that's all. And I'm like, it's only flesh. Yeah, it's only, it's only I mean, flesh. Granted, it was a fucking cool squish scene and gory, but it's like, I can't enjoy something that is. Which another con? Let me get elaborate real quick. I was fucking bored for a majority of this. It well, just was so. I was like, I remember I paused it because my girlfriend got home and she brought me some dinner, right? And I paused it at the fifty-four minute mark. This movie's an hour forty-five minutes. I looked at that and said I had like forty something minutes left. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I was Al Bundy <laughs> when Peg screw him. I'm like, why? 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 <laughs> Shoot me $12. <laughs> <laughs> it was painful. It, it's not just the how it's all over the place. It is boring. Very, is. very boring. Well, it doesn't help that the movie keeps doing rinse and repeat scenes back and forth where they're walking through the grass. Then you occasionally see the weird trippy shit. And then it goes back to them doing the same shit where they fucking show up to the grass again, go so inside. Yeah. Let's bring that scene it's... up real quick. Can I bring that one scene up where the it starts off in the movie with the, the brother and the sister, and they show up at the beginning of the movie? And then 30 minutes into the movie, it does that again. And I actually had to look down to make sure I didn't sit on the remote and rewind the fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that, I'm too. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Did we start the movie over? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's like, it's like, it's like they did the movie, and like, fuck. No, nah, cut. We're going to have to reshoot this. All right, <laughs> they reshoot the movie. Hey, who's the dumbass that left the first 30 minutes of the scrap movie in with the new movie? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we get towards this fucking end, and they, they, they try to be this over a top, top, over the top art. Where you get like in the middle of fucking transaction scenes, it's just like trying to do like blood skies and uh, which is beautiful and all. It's just it is you can tell it's trying to be too off, too out, like too print, like want to be poetic or something. I'm like, oh my god, this is bad. And yeah. then we get to the fucking ending, which by the way, you get this one scene where like the you, you don't even see the fucking brother touch the thing, and he's like fucking. Goes nutsoid. You don't even know if he died or not. But you keep seeing their bodies dead and when they're alive and they're finding their own skeletons. And then okay. he ends up getting strangled by uh, Patrick Wilson after that. And then it's like, okay, but he took possession of it. So why is he like helping him or whatever? I'm, I, I, this movie is fucking confusing. And then you also and get to where, to also, we got to bring this up. You forgot. Yeah. You forgot to mention the whole thing with the weird ritual scene where you have the girl like come across these weird grass like people, which I'm like, and they're they're having to do like weird sacrifice fucking dances and shit. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what okay, am I why are these things right here not killing people? Why is it they need somebody like Patrick Wilson to do it for them? It makes no sense. Yeah, it's like watch in 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 plus. Yeah. We get yeah. towards the end, and you start thinking, you, when you're deep in the story, you kind of know who might survive this. And this is where, like, you know, like we said, the kid was good, like, kind of creepy, and something wasn't right with him in the first half. In the second half, he becomes very innocent. And then, like, the boyfriend is in his film, which he thought he died, which was a weird part, because him and the fucking brother going at it, then they were cool. And then her, her brother just kind of, like, let him go when he fell. And then, like, Toward, basically towards the end, he touches the rock, and basically everybody's touched the rock went instant nuts. And it kind of reminded me off the the remake, The Shining, which I don't like the remake TV miniseries of The Shining, where he's like, "Get out of here!" Before he can become full possessed, you know, he gets rid of the kid like, "Go!" Oh, before he becomes yeah. one of them or whatever. It's just okay. And that thing killed him, but it didn't kill Patrick Wilson. I'm like, well, he, yeah, because oh, he ended up ah. strangling Patrick Wilson, and and after the girlfriend died, and then uh, after the girlfriend becomes unconscious, and then pretty much he ends up going to the rock, 
Well, after he after he kills Patrick Wilson, he comes to the girlfriend, realizes she's dead, and then the like rock kind of fucking calls to him or whatever. And then he goes to it, and then yeah, he like you were saying, it's just it doesn't make sense because he touches it, and then he tells the boy to go off and do it. But I'm yeah, like, like they run through woods, so they run through the weeds so he can get rid of the boy. Tell them that they're not to go in there, and then basically the it ends with the boys inside the church, and then he sees the beginning of the movie where the 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 two the 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 uh, sister and brother about to go back in there for. God damn, I'm already the fourth fucking time in this movie. And he actually makes them stop. And then they go on their day and the movie's over. Holy shit, what the fuck? Yeah, and then he dies inside the actual, like, grass or whatever. And then it's like, okay, so he sacrificed himself. But it, but wait, and, and then pretty much they're on their way. And I'm like, okay, Probably that the was half a fucking... Times I saw credits to the end of a movie in a while. Yeah, I was like... Thank, thank you that this movie's finally fucking over because that was yeah. such a weird fucking mind fuck of a movie. Like, and not I really, not, and not a good fuck one. Good way. Fuck was that was a mind fuck good way. This was a mind fuck in a bad way. Yeah, this was a film that really like. There's certain short stories or novellas that Stephen King has done that probably isn't best to do straight up adaptations of. Like, cause I, cause I hear other than the, probably the ending of it, the film is pretty close to the book. But at the same time, even on its own as a movie, this story just made no fucking sense. You get shit that makes that were with the fucking rituals, like we said earlier, that comes out of nowhere, and then you have like the the rock. It, it's really inconsistent what it's trying to be. Is it trying to? It, it makes some people possessed, then it doesn't make others possessed. It's yeah, like there's no there's no backstory at all. What's going on? Yeah. There's like yeah. nothing. It's just yeah. thrown at you and just say fuck it, fuck it. Because we're in Stephen King's, we got we're gonna make the name, we're gonna make the money off the name since Stephen King's name is b- making millions now in films. So fuck it, gave up. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, we had Gerald's Game, we had fucking uh, nine, uh, the nineteen twenty seven or twenty. I forgot which one that was 22. called. Um, twenty two. We had this. Of course, a lot of his movie adaptations. Which the only one that really pissed me off was Pet Cemetery. Which I thought was way, way, like it, it, it sucked compared to the original. But I will say, out of the lately stuff and the new Stephen King hype we are, and definitely the Netflix version, this was the worst. But this is also, to me, is the worst Stephen King. Yeah, I found the movie Thanks. like it's it's basically the worst Netflix, but it's also the second worst recent one we've had since Cell because I hold the factor Cell is literally the worst Stephen King adaptation. But this is definitely have, up there as far as one of his worst. Yeah, so with that being said, I fucking hated this movie. And I'm glad I'll never have to watch it again. So this is a flat line on the Film Freaks meter for me. It's going to be in my top ten worst. Yeah, it's definitely a flat line for me on the Film Freaks meter as well. I wasn't like, I mean, I was still like fucking, like I said, my, my fucking brain was just like trying to comprehend so much what was going on. I also felt like the movie, once it was over, I was like, I was just so confused after watching it. You know, I have, I don't really get that way because but I can really... I felt like I, I went up to the top of the mountain as in it's over with. Yes. Like, I, I, I thought I was being beat to death and it's finally over with. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, hopefully, you know, I, I've heard that off topic that, you know, that other show, that's that TV series that's based on Joe, uh, Stephen King's son, Joe Hill's uh, work called Nosferatu, I hear is good. So, there's still hope that, you know, th- there's other works. Actually, in the that one I've actually heard, uh, believe it or not, I hear it's very mixed. Not yeah. really good, because I've heard a lot of... I, I, I did hear a lot of uh, controversy with that one, where a lot of people said that it started out good, but it starts to fall apart. Like, I got you. Big time. It's a mixture. I don't know. I'll see it again, but yeah. Yeah. For those of you who have also King, seen... Please don't fucking do this type of shit again. Please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's saying because the the guy that directed this was also the guy that did Cube, which was actually I thought an underrated horror film. So there's like there's certain movies that <laughs> you probably just can't do like as a as a Stephen King adaptation. So yeah. For those of you who have also seen in the Tall Grass, let us and also the book that it's based off of. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about it. And if you like what you see here, you can feel free to like and subscribe to our channel. 
and check out some other reviews here and our website at filmfreaks.com. We'll be seeing you in our next review. We'll see you later. Later.